Hey guys, another day, another Game Informer article, and this one I've been waiting for. Today we got a small look at each of the eight new Crucible maps that will arrive with the Taken King. I'll leave the link to their article if you want to see all of their gameplay clips as well. So going down the list, let's start off with the new maps we've already seen. First up, Bannerfall. Game Informer says that this tower is set on the other side of the city and has been abandoned. It's a good sized map and its symmetry works well for rift matches. Bungie says that there was a fourth faction that held court in this tower, along with the beginnings of the new monarchy faction. You can see that in the banners on each side of the map. On one side you have the familiar new monarchy logo, but on the other side you have this unfamiliar logo that's still tattered and torn from when the faction used to exist. Of the new maps I played, this was probably my favorite. It had a really open feel to it, and I liked the familiar feeling of being in a tower, yet being in an unfamiliar tower at the same time. Rift Mode on this particular map felt very balanced, and it was a really interesting map overall. I can foresee using any type of loadout here because there were good long sight lines, but there was also a lot of tight corners that you wanted to have a shotgun or just a fast time to kill weapon equipped as well. And then we have Frontier, which is set far out on the city perimeter of Earth. The location is a transfer and relay station, shuttling supplies to the other perimeter stations such as the Twilight Gap. Frontier is a semi-symmetric map built around a train yard. A train track cuts through the middle of the map and runs across a bridge, which is a central landmark for the map and a bottleneck for combat. Frontier features a lot of good sniper sidelines and has a good mix of open and closed spaces for firefights. Again, this is a very well-balanced map for different loadouts. If you want to snipe, then generally you're going to be on the inside area of the map where it's more open. Both ends of the map are very closed off, which is where rift combat will get really interesting. If you're trying to run that rift into a very secured location with a couple of people that have shotguns, you're probably going to die. Next up, Crossroads. This map is located on a Vex structure and is one of only two maps featuring teleporters. Crossroads is overgrown with the giant vegetation that formed on Mars in the wake of the Traveler's arrival. Bungie says that it's an interesting mix of the familiar Vex architecture that leans a little bit more towards metallic instead of crumbled stone, and there are giant rotted out tree stumps that provide some good cover. It's almost two maps because there's an entire chunk that functions as its main body where the team spawn, and then there's a separate island that's a gnarled mass of trees and roots set way off to the side. They're connected by launchers that catapult you across the map as well as three sets of teleporters. This is still a really fun map to play on because I'm not used to playing with teleporters and the launcher cannons. And then there's Sector 618, a timed PlayStation exclusive map. You can expect a lot of leaping and platforming on this particular map, since Sector 618 features a square layout that has two bridges crossing a central chasm. The map is actually set inside the Cosmodrome wall. This map felt really small to me, so shotguns, sidearms, fusion rifles, those are going to be king here if you're wanting a good secondary. Now the next four are brand new, and we got our first bits of gameplay on them today. Unfortunately, due to copyright reasons, I can only post screenshots, but feel free to check out the Game Informer article to see the full 30 second clips of each map. So this here is Ghost Ship. It's set in the reef, it's the smallest map in the Taken King, and has a symmetric layout, but one side of the ship has been torn open by a hive attack. Bungie says that Ghost Ship features some low gravity effects, so dead guardians and other objects will slowly float away. We got another look at what appears to be a new exotic shotgun from Tex Mechanica, as well as the new exotic hunter gauntlets. Next up, we have Exile, based on a hive prison cell that sits inside one of Oryx's ships orbiting Saturn. They say that Exile is a little bit longer and narrower than most Crucible maps, and is strong for control and clash. The lower level adds a vertical element to combat. Bungie lets us know that there are three main lanes through the map. There's the bridge side, which takes you out past a window that shows you Saturn's and some of the other ships in Oryx's fleet. Down the middle of the map is a ramp that takes you through a circular room with a crystal in it. In that room is a drop down which allows you to enter the lower catacomb level. You can also see that the Jade Rabbit is being used. It's a timed PlayStation exclusive exotic scout rifle, and it looks like it has a perk on it that has a chance to refill the magazine on precision hits. Nearing the end here, we've got Memento. Obviously, this is another map based in the European Dead Zone. The core of the map is an overgrown street tucked in between two larger buildings, all set within a roughly triangular shape. In the middle is a larger courtyard that's angled down and provides some sightline blocking. They say that this is another good control and clash map. 
Bungie says that Memento is more vertical than Widow's Court. There's one building in Widow's Court that has an elevation shift, but Memento has a couple of significant elevation shifts where you can get some really strong high ground advantages. Personally, I'm all for this, as a lot of Destiny's maps feel pretty flat even though they have different levels to them, there's never going to be multiple levels of combat going on. Finally, there's easily the coolest looking map, Vertigo. This has a symmetrical map that's based in Mercury, and you'll be fighting on a Vex structure that's high in the sky. At one time, a Cabal expedition force began exploring this structure, but the group mysteriously vanished. Cabal architecture adds some variety to both sides of this. Bungie says that one of the key features of this map is a one-way teleporter that spits players out on a really powerful platform on the other side of the map. That platform gives you great coverage of both ends of the map and really opens up some interesting gameplay moments. Vertigo's one central control room is really crucial and gives you the fastest access to anywhere on the map. So what do you guys think? Do the new maps look appealing? Overall, I think my favorite is still going to be Bannerfall, just because that one looks really cool, but of the new maps that we saw today, I'm really interested in exploring the European Dead Zone even more, even if it's just in a PvP map. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.